Now, I want to invite all you little partners out there to come out and see the Bronco Billy Wild West Show right off of I-80. Clint Eastwood is an actor and filmmaker, screenwriter and producer, composer, and even politician. We can talk about him for hours. The long life of the cinema legend is full of many different events. You will find out about the brightest of them in this video that we made at the request of our subscribers. Clint Eastwood, where is Hollywood's top cowboy now? Clint Eastwood Jr. was born in San Francisco on May 31, 1930. His father, Clint Eastwood Sr., who descended from the first English and Scottish settlers, worked in the steel mill. But according to some reports, he was a bond salesman, and his mother, Margaret, was Dutch-Irish and worked as an engineer at IBM. Since the childhood of the future legend of the cinema was in the time of the Great Depression, the family had to move frequently in search of work. Six months in Sacramento, then as much in Reading, then Pacific Palisades, and finally they settled in California town of Piedmont, where Eastwood graduated from high school. He spent his high school years in the Oakland Technical School, where he was first offered the chance to try his hand as an actor. The English teacher chose him for the role of a mentally challenged boy. As the actor admitted many years later, it turned out terribly, but the play was a hit. It was so bad that it provoked laughter, and everyone liked it. In those years, he worked part-time as a paperboy, and after receiving his high school diploma, he took a job at a gas station. Later, he worked as a fireman, a grocery salesman, a golf caddy, and played piano in bars and clubs in California. In 1951, Eastwood enrolled at Seattle University, but did not graduate because he was drafted into the Army. He did his military service at Fort Ord. The Korean War was already underway, where our hero was supposed to be sent to. However, it did not happen because of an accident in which Clint almost died. The plane he was flying fell into the sea. He was saved by a miracle and great swimming skills. He reached the shore in a few hours. After that, the guy was allowed to stay at the training camp as a swimming instructor. After his army discharge, Clint became a student at Los Angeles College and signed up for acting classes. As he became more and more interested in this art, he actively participated in plays in the school's theater. Later, he was offered a contract by Irving Glassberg, a cinematographer at Universal Studios, who invited the aspiring actor to an audition. The result was an agreement to work for one and a half years. In the 1950s, the young Eastwood mostly played occasional small roles on television and in the movie. He starred in low-budget horror films, thrillers and westerns, Revenge of the Creature, Francis and the Navy, for which he earned $300 a week, Tarantula, and others. In 1953, Clint married actress Maggie Johnson. Before the wedding, the guy confessed to his beloved that he was a womanizer and ladies' man who does not tolerate family scandals and jealousy scenes. The beauty was not afraid of this, and they lived in a marriage until 1984, even though they actually separated earlier. Her ex-husband paid Maggie $25 million for each year of their union. The couple had a son, Kyle, and a daughter, Allison. The children were very attached to their father, and they still have a good relationship. In 1956, the actor played the first major role of Jack Rice in the comedy western The First Traveling Sales Lady, for which he received $750. In 1958, he starred in the war movie Lafayette Escadrille and once again played the main character in the western ambush at Cimarron Pass, for which he got $750. By the 1960s, when Eastwood moved to Los Angeles and starred in the television series Rawhide, he bought his first house on the Monterey Peninsula. His work paid pretty well, $700 a week. And then, according to the master, he realized that he could make money acting. It was a dream job that lasted six years. Even though the project was not very popular, it was here that the actor was noticed by Italian director Sergio Leone. In 1964, he invited Clint for the role of a cowboy in his film A Fistful of Dollars. When a man with a 45 meets a man with a rifle, you said the man with a pistol is a dead man. Let's see if that's true. It was a kind of military remake of the samurai drama by Akira Kurosawa, Yojimbo, and after the western was released in Asian countries, its authors were accused of plagiarism. However, the film was a commercial success, and the role of Joe the Gunman brought Eastwood world fame. During a promotional campaign in the United States, the actor's character was nicknamed the Man with No Name. He received $15,000 for his role. The movie was popular in Europe and America, so it was decided to continue cooperation. Soon, two sequels were released, for a few dollars more and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. If your friends stay out in the damp, they're liable to catch a cold, aren't they? Or a bullet. Eastwood earned $50,000 for the first one and $250,000 for the last one. 
Many years after the release of these spaghetti westerns that made up the so-called Dollar Trilogy, Sergio Leone noted that he only approved Clint for the major role because he had two facial expressions that were needed, with a hat and without a hat. Working on these films, Eastwood wore the same poncho and forbade washing it during filming. He suggested that the man with no name smoked cigars, which the actor cut into three pieces. The guy's personal life did not stand still either. Despite his status as a family man, he had a brief affair with dancer Roxanne Tunis, which resulted in the birth of his daughter Kimberlyn Eastwood. Clint loves music, especially jazz. He composes tunes, some of which are used as soundtracks for his films. In the early 1960s, the artist released his own album of jazz covers. For his role in the film The Witches, the actor received $20,000 and a new Ferrari. Then came such films as Hang 'em High, Coogan's Bluff, Where Eagles Dare, Paint Your Wagon, Two Mules for Sister Sarah, Kelly's Heroes, and The Beguiled. For each, he got between $400,000 and $1 million. In 1971, Eastwood made his directorial debut with Play Misty For Me, in which he also played one of the major roles. Since then, he has starred in films made by his own El Paso Productions company. The 1970s brought him fame as brutal policeman Harry Callahan in Don Siegel's Dirty Harry, for whom he continued to actively act later. How deeply moved I am. How do you like that? I pass along a compliment? You could at least be a little bit polite. It might not even kill you to say thanks. <laughs> Much rather say thanks to a raise. Hey, Harry. The brutal police thriller became one of the most influential films of the genre, and the cynical and inattentive Callahan became a cult figure. Then, the talented American played the major role in the western Joe Kidd. Well, Laura, I got a dollar says I can break your neck before you get that rig moved a half inch. In 1973, Eastwood appeared in the second part of The Adventures of Dirty Harry, which was called Magnum Force. And in the western High Plains Drifter, he also directed the latter. Soon you'll ever live to be. Soon our hero shown in the role of Thunderbolt in the adventure comedy Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. His rules made Eastwood a new embodiment of a brave and courageous hero. In 1975, he made a movie based on the novel by Rod Whittaker, The Iger Sanction, and played one of the major roles in it. In this period, he acted in the third Dirty Harry film, The Enforcer, in the western The Outlaw Josie Wales, which he also directed in the action films The Gauntlet, Every Which Way But Loose, which brought him a $16 million fee plus 15% of the gross output and escape from Alcatraz. Tell me something, you through killing white guys? Why? Oh, I don't know. I just figured maybe next time I wouldn't turn my back on you. The film is based on a true story of the escape from America's most impregnable prison at the time, isolated from the outside world. Meanwhile, the filmography of the celebrity included new works and his personal life included new affairs. Since 1978, for four years, Clint has lived with actress Sandra Locke and their relationship lasted 14 years. During this time, she starred in several Eastwood movies and he acted as a producer of her two films. The early 80s were marked for the actor and filmmaker by the release of the successful film Bronco Billy. I'm going to give you one free ticket each to the greatest Wild West show on Earth. And uh, I want you to bring your folks. By the way, in it, you can also see his then-beloved Sandra, who was nominated for the Golden Raspberry for her role in the film. During the same time, Clint starred in the action comedy Any Which Way You Can. It is a sequel to the 1978 film Every Which Way But Loose. In 1982, Eastwood directed two films in which he also acted. Honky Tonk Man, in which the star's son, Kyle, also plays, as well as singer Marty Robbins, who died on the eve of the premiere, and Firefox, for which Clint received $3 million. Soon, another movie about Detective Dirty Harry, Sudden Impact, was released. Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. The phrase, go ahead, make my day, which the main character says, became a popular expression and Eastwood became $30 million richer. In 1984, the erotic thriller Tightrope came out, which Eastwood shot with Richard Tuggle and also acted as a producer and starring actor. His partner on the set was his sweetheart Locke. In the same year, he played a police chief in the comedy action movie City Heat. For both movies, Clint earned $5 million. Then he again directed, produced, and starred in the film Pale Rider. It also added $6 million to our hero's account. However, during the filming, according to Eastwood, he got the worst injury in his career. His horse fell through the thin ice and the actor dislocated his shoulder. In 1985, he met stewardess Jacqueline Reeves, with whom he lived basically as a family for about three years. They had a son, Scott, and daughter, Catherine. 
After the breakup, Reeves called Eastwood an evil and cruel man. The next year was marked by the release of the war drama Heartbreak Ridge. The film, dedicated to the American invasion of Granada in 1983, brought its creator and lead actor $10 million. Then Eastwood was already actively engaged in politics. In the spring of 1986, he won the election of the nonpartisan mayor of Carmel-by-the-Sea, California, and held the post for two years. So the next works to which Clint had a hand came out only in 1988. They are the last, fifth film in the Dirty Harry series, the Deadpool, and the biographical film dedicated to the memory of jazz saxophonist Charlie Parker, Bird, for which he won a Golden Globe Award. In the late 1980s, Clint starred in the action comedy Pink Cadillac. Then came two films directed by Eastwood with himself in the lead roles, The Rookie and White Hunter Blackheart. In 1990, after breaking up with Sandra Locke, Eastwood's ex-lover went to court to demand $1.3 million from him. The woman claimed that the Western hero had forced her to have two abortions and a tubal ligation. She also released a memoir in which she recounted the details of her life with the famous womanizer. The descriptions were personal, so Eastwood immediately bought the rights to the book from the publisher. Soon, the top cowboy of Hollywood began dating actress Frances Fisher, who in 1993 gave birth to his daughter Francesca Ruth. The actor's long-term relationship did not work out. Two years after the birth of the girl, they broke up. Meanwhile, Eastwood waited until the right age to play William Manny, the main character in the drama Unforgiven. Just because we're going on this killing, that don't mean I'm going to go back to being the way I was. I just need the money. Get a new start for them youngsters. Clint won two Oscars and a Golden Globe for the film dedicated to his mentors Sergio Leone and Don Siegel. In 1993, his lead role in the action movie In the Line of Fire brought him $7 million. Also, another Eastwoods movie with him and Kevin Costner in the lead roles was released, A Perfect World. I'll tell you what, you see me making a wrong move, you go ahead and speak up. I might not agree with you, but I'll listen. At the same time, ex-girlfriend Sandra Locke showed up again. This time, she sued Warner Bros, pointing out that the company had offered her a sham contract, had no intention of producing her films or giving her directing credentials because the real contract had been bought out by Eastwood. Litigation over this ended with the settlement of relations only in the late 90s. Eastwood's atypical directorial work, The Bridges of Madison County, is also worth noting. In it, he starred alongside Meryl Streep. In 1996, Eastwood married again. This time, his fiancée was a beautiful TV presenter, Dina, who was 35 years younger than him. Soon, they had a daughter, Morgan. Clint and Dina lived together for seven years. The woman filed for divorce, alleging insurmountable differences in the relationship with her husband. Even before the divorce, Eastwood, who was 83 years old at the time, had an affair with 42-year-old Erica Fisher. Absolute Power and Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil are the titles of the next works of the amorous creator. In the first film, the director's daughters Kimber and Allison appeared in cameo roles. In 1999, Eastwood directed the drama True Crime and the 2000s were marked by the release of the sci-fi film Space Cowboys. In 2002, viewers saw a new film by Eastwood, Bloodwork, in which he played one of the main roles. The film was not a box office success and grossed just over $30 million at the worldwide box office with a budget of $50 million. A year later, a pretty dark detective film, Mystic River, was released. Eastwood's work was nominated for a number of prestigious awards and won several of them. In particular, its creator was awarded the Honorary Cannes Golden Mentor Award. In 2004, the filmmaker gave the world a super successful drama, Million Dollar Baby. Okay. If I'm going to take you on... You won't never regret it. Look, just listen to me. If I take you on... I promise I'll work so hard. God, this is a mistake already. For this film, Eastwood won two Oscars and a Golden Globe. This was followed by several more directorial works. In early 2007, Clint Eastwood was awarded Francis's highest civilian title, Légion d'honneur, and two years later, he became a commander of the order. In 2008, the Oscar-winning filmmaker shot Gran Torino and played the main role of the Polish-American Walt Kowalski. Ever notice how you come across somebody once in a while that you shouldn't have f***ed with? That's me. Soon, another Eastwood movie was released, Changeling. The major role in the thriller was played by Angelina Jolie. Eastwood then directed the biographical drama Invictus, for which he received $6 million. The film is based on an episode in the life of Nelson Mandela, played by Morgan Freeman. After finishing work on the mystery thriller Hereafter, in 2010, the tireless Eastwood set out to create a film about the life of FBI founder Edgar Hoover, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. In 2012, Robert Lawrence's sports drama Trouble with the Curve came out, where Eastwood played an aging baseball scout. What do you say now, jackass? That's known as trouble with the curve. 
In early 2014, Eastwood, who attended the opening dinner of a golf tournament in California, saved the event director from choking on cheese. The Hollywood guest did it with a Heimlich maneuver. He came up behind the choking man, wrapped both arms around him below his chest, and yanked him up several times. In the same year, his landmark directorial work was the historical drama American Sniper. It was nominated for an Oscar in six categories and won the award for Best Sound Editing. In 2016, he directed and produced the drama solely based on true events. In an interview with Esquire in August, he criticized the anti-Trump media campaign but later denied supporting either side. On the eve of his 90th birthday, after filming a rather unsuccessful film, The 1517 to Paris, Eastwood surprised his fans with the release of the crime drama The Mule, in which he played the main character. That's why I'm Googling it. I, I don't have any reception. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the trouble with this generation. If you can't open a fruit box without calling the internet. <laughs> the director's real daughter, Allison, also starred in it. In 2019, the biographical drama about the 1996 tragedy in Atlanta during the Summer Olympics, Richard Jewell, was released. In 2021, despite his venerable age, Eastwood was not sitting around but filming, producing, and starring in the neo-Western Cry Macho. We don't have drugs. We don't have any drugs. You guys are wasting your time. You got nothing else to do. Loser cops. You want to help us put this stuff back in the car? He also sued $6.1 million from Metatonus UAB, a Lithuanian company that illegally used his image to promote medical cannabis. According to the course, Eastwood also received $95,000 as attorney's fees. By the way, in 2012, the Hollywood veteran took part in a Chrysler commercial titled It's Halftime in America, which was shown during halftime of the final game of the Super Bowl of American Soccer. As a big golf fan, Eastwood also starred in commercials for the United States Golf Association. The legendary filmmaker doesn't deny himself anything, as his net worth is $375 million. It is not surprising that Eastwood has an impressive real estate portfolio, which includes a sprawling 15,069-square-foot house in Carmel-by-the-Sea. In 2010, it was reported that he spent about $20 million to build an apartment complex. The area has one of California's most soulful places, the historic Mission Ranch, which has a restaurant, a hotel, and a golf club. It's all owned by the celebrity. In the late 1990s, he successfully invested $20 million in the Pebble Beach Lynx Jan Golf Club in the protected resort area of the Monterey Peninsula. In 2017, it was leaked to the media that Clint Eastwood was selling his Spanish colonial-style mansion in Pebble Beach for $9,750,000. The 7,000-square-foot home has six bedrooms, the same number of bathrooms, and a large dining room with ocean views. It has often hosted parties with Hollywood stars and foreign guests. The interior uses terracotta tiles, wrought iron, and rare woods. The living room ceiling is decorated with large wooden beams. Eastwood also owns two large homes near the Bel Air Country Club in Los Angeles and another in Sun Valley, Idaho. He also owns 1.5 acres of oceanfront land on Maui. As a certified pilot, Eastwood often flies to movie sets in his own helicopter, which he bought at the Paris Air Show. He does not like standing in traffic, so he is rather disinterested in cars, preferring an old Cadillac and a fast GMC Typhoon SUV for less than $30,000. Though at one time he was an inveterate motorist and biker, his garage included luxury Italian and British sports cars as well as the iconic British Triumph and Norton motorcycles. For several decades, the celebrity has been practicing meditation, carefully monitoring his sleep, not smoking, and keeping himself in good physical shape. On each movie set, he sets up a small gym, and although many people associate Eastwood on screen with the cool guy, in real life, he is afraid of insects. His children chose creative careers. Daughter Kimber became an actress, elder son Kyle is a jazz musician, and his sister Allison is known as an actress and producer. Younger son Scott is a model and actor. His sister Catherine is also an actress. Francesca Eastwood became the star of the reality show Miss Eastwood and Company. Most media report that the actor is the father of seven children. However, today he has eight. His eldest daughter, Lori, who was born out of wedlock and raised in foster care, is over 70. As Eastwood told at an event, he did not know about his daughter's existence. He had a casual relationship with her mother when he was already engaged to actress Maggie Johnson. He is sad and ashamed that his child had to search for her biological parents, but now he tries to spend more time with Lori and her children, who adore the famous grandfather. What is your favorite Clint Eastwood movie? If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.